Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 110th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and before we begin to preface, I just wanted to say that I will be discussing the two giveaways I'm currently holding more towards the end of this episode, so just be sure to stick around for that. Alright, and first up, this week there's been some great news in the world of jailbreaking. First, the iPhone dev team officially updated Red Snow to actually include support for Cydia on iOS 6. So now all users have to do is download the latest version of Red Snow and they will be able to jailbreak either their iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, or fourth generation iPod Touch on iOS 6.0 without then having to install Cydia through SSH. And of course, I made a complete and in-depth tutorial on it. And if you guys are interested at all, you should definitely be sure to check it out. Again, it is a tethered jailbreak tutorial for iOS OS 6. Unfortunately, as of now, there is not an untethered jailbreak. However, there is some good news related to the progress of the untethered jailbreak for iOS 6 on the newer iOS-based devices. According to a tweet yesterday from Planet Being, who is definitely a reputable contributor to the jailbreaking community, who has collaborated with both of the dev teams in the past on various utilities and tools, a new kernel exploit has been discovered and successfully added to the current fail break. Now, yes, I did mean to say fail break instead of jailbreak. For those of you that don't know, a fail break is essentially what developers refer to a jailbreak that relies on an Apple developer account. And if a fail break were to be released, while it couldn't be utilized by most jailbreakers, it would have severe legal ramifications to the members of the jailbreaking community, especially the dev teams. And in the tweet, plan of being stated that thanks to the new edition of the kernel exploit, they're now able to successfully build and install tweaks or third-party jailbreak packages on the iPhone 5. Additionally, Planet being said that they've almost achieved a full tethered jailbreak. However, again, because this is a fail break, it does rely on a developer account. So essentially with that said, they'd have to discover and implement untethered exploits because the current tethered Lime Rain exploit was patched some time ago with the release of A5 based devices. And while there's no denying that there's an immeasurable amount of work before a new jailbreak utility is made available to the public and ready for prime time, this is certainly a step in the right direction and it means that there is progress on the iOS 6 untethered jailbreak for older and newer iOS-based devices alike. Also in a recent tweet, Comex, a former iOS hacker and security expert who left the jailbreaking scene for an amazing opportunity at Apple, officially announced that as of last week, he is no longer associated with Apple. So what does this mean for the jailbreaking community? Will Comex return? Will he provide a jailbreak solution for iOS 6? Or will he contribute to a possible solution? Unfortunately, only time will tell, but just be sure to stay tuned to this series, Best Tech Info and Rumors, and my website, Best Tech Info. I will keep you guys fully updated on the untethered jailbreak situation and anything interesting that Comex is up to related to the jailbreaking scene. All right, moving on the other day, on the 16th, Apple sent out invitations to select members of the press to a second fall media event scheduled for next Tuesday, October 23rd. Now the event will be held at the California Theater in San Jose, California, and it will commence at approximately 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern time. And during the event, it's speculated that Apple will unveil the highly rumored and much anticipated iPad mini. Now also in another report, it's been suggested that Apple will unveil a new 13 inch model Retina Display MacBook Pro. So while Apple currently has a Retina Display MacBook Pro, it's only for the 15 inch model and with this move it will be another great step in adopting retina displays across multiple products all right and going back to the ipad mini e-trade supply a parts firm who received iphone 5 components as far back as june publicized new images of what they believe to be the display that the ipad mini will use according to the report the screen measures at about 6.3 inches in height and 4.8 inches in width while still maintaining the same 4 to 3 aspect ratio as the current full-size iPad. Additionally, nowhere else a site that accurately leaked and reported on information, details, and pictures of the new iPhone 5 posted an image of what they were told is an iPad mini display going through a quality control check. Now, initially, they were a little hesitant to post this picture. However, after seeing E-Trade Supplies report, they did decide to release it on a post on their site. Moving on, it's also been suggested that Apple will announce updates to both their iMac and Mac mini desktop models during the October 23rd media event. And it's speculated that the updates to the iMac line will retain the same price as the current generation. 
Now, another report claims that Apple will officially introduce support for 8GB RAM units with the new iMac and Mac Mini models. While previously supporting only 4GB modules, if accurate, this update means that the new iMac could potentially have up to 32GB of official RAM from Apple. Now, of course, that is assuming that Apple continues to build 4 slots for RAM in their iMac models. Now, in a quick report, 9to5Mac claims they've received the price for the lower end Retina Display 13-inch model MacBook Pro. The article suggests that the entry-level 13-inch Retina-equipped MacBook Pro will start at roughly $1,600. And that, of course, is in excess of $500 over the comparable non-Retina model. Now, it's also said that the premium will be roughly $100 more for the Retina Display 13-inch model than for the upgrade from the basic 15-inch MacBook Pro to the Retina model. And really quick, to conclude the iPad mini news for this week, the device could be available for pre-order on October 26th and actually ship out to customers or be available in retail locations on November 2nd. Now, this, of course, is based on the announcement and availability of the iPhone 5. So essentially, the iPhone 5 was announced on September 12th, which was was a Wednesday. Two days later on a Friday, which was September 14th, Apple started taking pre-orders for the new iPhone. And exactly one week later was when the device officially launched. So again, loosely following that same schedule, the iPad mini is expected to be unveiled on October 23rd, available for pre-order on October 26th, and available for purchase at a retail location on November 2nd. And finally, the other day on the 17th, I released a quick review of Apple's new fifth generation iPod Touch and briefly mentioned the giveaway I'm holding. So if you guys want to see that or you want more details on anything else I discussed in today's episode, just be sure to check down below. I'll have a link to a post on my site that details everything. All right, and for the question of the day, let me know what you guys think about the iPad mini. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it will become an instant hit? Anything related to the iPad mini, you can just leave down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. And let's talk about the two giveaways I'm holding really quick. All right, and first of all, the Kindle Fire giveaway I'm holding will end this weekend. So again, all you have to do to enter to win is just go to any of my videos, rate them up, and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the key phrase, iPhone 5 Kindle Fire giveaway. And of course, once you do that, you will be automatically entered to win. So again, I will conclude that giveaway this weekend. Now, as for the new iPod Touch, I'm giving away a 32 gigabyte Black and Slate Edition 5th Generation iPod Touch, and all you have to do to win that, again, is go to any of my videos, rate them up, and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the key phrase, iPod Touch 5G ICU. And once you do that, you will also be automatically entered to win. Now, you can enter either of these giveaways on any of my videos, so just be sure to keep that in mind. And of course, don't forget to be updated more often. Be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.